Hello and welcome to episode 4 of E30 M3 Recreation. I hope all of you are excited as I am to see the progress of this build unfold. If you haven't had the opportunity to watch the past episodes explaining the direction of this project, take a look at the playlist on the Car Loop channel. And please hit that subscribe and like button as it really helps with the YouTube algorithm to push this video to more people. So sit tight because there's something rather special coming up in this episode. A lot has been happening with this E30. Spence has been putting in all the hours to get this engine completely renewed, but that part is almost done, ready for the bodywork task to be carried out next. We mustn't forget Spencer is working on many other projects in the garage at the same time. With that in mind, let me present to you this truly amazing E30 M3 track car. There is a link on the screen if you want to look at the owner's Instagram page for more details. In this episode, we will take a detailed look around this genuine M3 project car and Spencer will talk us through some of the modifications carried out at BMP conversions a couple of years ago to create this track weapon. I mean, seeing it in the flesh, it looks pretty decent, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> Look at the carbon fibre boot lid. It is a race car, you know, nothing was ever mint on it. Um, you know, it's just a, a tool to do a job. I, I tell you what, on the black, leaving the, the boot lid bare looks fantastic. Why is that not so flush? The hinges, the hinges basically. Uh, okay. He's put some little um, pins in here, just holding it up. Everything rattles. Oh, okay, okay. So it's, it's right. just everything stripped out. All the originally there would have been some little rubber donuts that you screw in and out that holds this from rattling. Yeah. I mean, it's got the the boot lid. You can see it's got all the internal structures, all the carbon internal structures. He's obsessed with weight. <laughs> Absolutely obsessed. Um, that's, even down to his wheel nuts, he's had magnesium wheel nuts made. These mirrors are um, a carbon fibre replica of the original AC Snitzer ones. Right. So they're made by Marcus, the same guy who makes them in uh, rare sporters in Germany. Okay. And I mean, the quality of them is just you know, beautiful. They do look nice. Yeah, lovely, lovely mirrors. And what we got, the CSL airbox? Yes, yeah, CSL airbox. Um, we're running uh, strict 288 cams as well, I believe, um, and uh, CSL map on the ECU. We were a bit concerned about heat buildup. In we, we were talking to Neon was talking to a few people on uh, the forums about the E46 engines, and they said that the coils were melting, and, and there was quite a bit big heat buildup. Right. So he took it upon himself to just machine the cover out like that, just to let air flow through. And okay. we got the ceramic coated exhausts on here. Yeah, as well. yeah, ceramic coated exhaust manifolds. Um, and they've they've done some miles, and they've stayed. Back. Oh, they've done uh, nearly two seasons now. So yeah. it's. It's maybe a, a thoroughbred sort of race track car, but it's actually driven to and from the track. Yeah. So he drives the car, you know, leaves his house six in the morning, gets to the track two hours down the road, and then thrashes the car all day, and then gets in the car and drives it home. So the reliability, reliability factor. I mean, the car's never come in broken down. It's right. Never failed once. And the fuel tank thing—that's just a, a learning. Again. Yeah. I mean. Well, actually, what actually happened with fuel tank, we had a, a plastic tank in there prior with steel straps around the tank, and the tank was supported like that. 
and the tank was remade by a company. They took the dimensions of the, the tank that was in there and they didn't obviously weld those L-shaped brackets on fully. They've only welded them down the sides. They should have welded them top and bottom. Yeah. Um, and the weight of the fuel, jumping up and down, because the suspension's so hard, it's just broke the welds off the tank and the tank's fallen down. So um, Andy, who uh, has done all the rest of the engineering on this car, you know, all the stainless aluminium parts, He's actually going to rectify it and, and, and do the tank properly, have the tank go fully weld it and make brand new brackets for it. Right. So that's what's come back for this time, um, the repair. Plastic side windows. Yeah, right. plastic side windows. So they're leg sand windows and they actually, the previous owner, uh, that wasn't me, but the previous owner of the car actually made the windows work on the mechanism. So he spent a lot of time and effort doing that actually, I, I, hats off to him. He's, he's done a nice job. But the problem is, is if you exceed, say for instance, 100 mile an hour, the window does that and you can't shut it. So, you know, it's low cruise and driving it to and from track is, is perfect. But it's got Ferrari seats in it. Oh, wow. um, so they're full carbon fiber Ferrari seats, obviously custom made brackets to, to mount it in there. So we went original um, glass, obviously you have to go glass on the front screen, um, but it didn't have an original M3 seal in, so we whipped the screen out, had a refitted properly with a proper BM seal in there. And that just makes it look nicer, you know, have it rebonded. That's got a heated front screen, because there's no heater in this car. So we went heated front screen on it. And uh, yeah, paint the engine bay. There's the lack of wiring. Yeah, so again, <laughs> it's the, just the, very the, cool. The, the electrician who does the wiring for, the, for all the builds, um, his company's called Auto Electrica, and you can find him on Facebook. He basically does every BMW build that I, I, I build, every engine transplant that I fit, he does the wiring for. Um, he makes the, the whole entire loom for the car from scratch. He can wire in any, anything you want. Um, and that's why everything's so neat, because everything's well thought through. And then we've got that Peterson valve there, I see. Yeah, Peterson valve on the inner wing. That's exactly where that fits. Um, I always fit them there anyway. And let's say that's piped from the engine to, from, from the oil feed and then to the sun. Um, there's a few, a few upgrades been made with we're running Ben Hack Engineering's uh, oil line for the Vanos. Um, they break off at either end, they break off down at the bottom, so Ben does a reinforced lifetime guarantee pipe. Andy Cater, who ATM Engineering, where we're at this workshop, um, he does all the, he done all the stainless steel exhaust system from front to back. Um, we've done a heat matrix delete, so he had to do all the, the aluminium pipes for that. It's not as simple as it sounds. <laughs> um, any modification metalwork wise is, is down to Randy. These wings, uh, again, these are aftermarket, and they're made by a, a different company in Germany. I don't know who makes them actually, but. Oh, so the, okay. These are actually wider than standard M3. So this car is actually an M3? This is, a, yeah, this is an original M3, yeah. But you've made it into a right-hand drive? Yep, so I converted it to right-hand drive. So when Neon bought it, he did, did not want to drive a left-hand drive car. Um, he didn't want to have to get used to, you know, changing gear with the right-hand right -hand side. And, um, so the first initial thing was to find a right-hand drive uh, dash. Right, I actually uh, do a, a custom-made engine bed, and the engine bed allows the sump to go in the back, so the engine's made far back where Neon wanted it. Neon wanted the engine as far back as we physically could get it. Yeah. I don't think he would do it again because he didn't understand the implications of involved in doing that. Obviously the gearbox mate was custom, the engine mates were custom, the prop shaft was custom, uh, the exhaust system had to be custom, uh, the steering linkage had to be custom, the engine bed had to be custom. Um, and that was just to get the engine in. As soon as the engine was in, we found that the pedal box wouldn't fit, so the pedal box had to be custom. The steering column itself had to be moved back two and a half inches. So the seating position, because you then moved the steering, had to be moved back. So everything, even the passenger and the driver's seat, are mounted as far back as we can get at two and a half inches to gain that much at the front of the engine. And obviously <laughs> there was massive cost involved in that but that has actually moved the weight more central to the car. And I mean, the car absolutely handles fantastically. Yeah. Um, we actually moved the engine that far back that we didn't have to modify the exhaust manifold. The exhaust manifold fitted straight in this car like it was on an E46 M3. And so, we've got oil fed dampers there as well. Yeah, I think it's actually gas, I believe. Um, 
I think they're gas. I'm not sure actually. They're Bill Stein. I'm pretty certain they're Bill Stein. We're about to have them rebuilt, and uh, yeah, they they are um, a very nice bit of kit. I think they're about a thousand pound a corner. <laughs> wow. It's got them in the boot as well. It does sit very low, doesn't it? It's too low. Um, so originally, what BMW done uh, back in 1992? Um, around about that year is they actually done a massive amount of arch modification to get this car um, lower. So to run 18 inch wheels, BMW wanted to run 18 inch wheels. So for DTM, they had to raise the inner arches. So they raised them up by 25, 30 mil. So they cut them off the original turrets, left the turrets in situ, and then raised them up by that, that amount, infill of steel along the bottom. And that was basically to get these wheels in the arch and lower the car as far as they could go. So they had to do a massive amount to the crumple zone as well. So the crumple zone on this car has actually been modified up and then comes back down to take these size wheels. So that's how we were able to get this car as low as it is with yeah. that size wheels. We've got the Flox dashboard here. Yep. It's very furry. Yeah. It's really <laughs> nice. It's just, yeah, mainly, wow. you know, mainly just to take the glare off. And, <laughs> It has a purpose. And then we've got the centre, oh, we've got a steering wheel here actually. Yeah, so the steering wheel is a uh, quick release item, and just to, just for ease of access. The owner, uh, Nian Lala, actually made this switch panel himself, and you know, very, very talented in things like that. Um, yeah, he, he took his time and made it, and measured it out, and it, it looks really, really good. Um, he also done the, the rev counter and um, yeah, modified that and, and put the, the starting point low so when you get into full chat it's actually visually straight in your eyes past the steering. Uh, this has actually got a shift light uh, from the USA in it as well so as you increase on the revs of you go all 1500 RPM per light on the greens as it hits yellow and as it hits the reds it starts flashing the lot of them and you know to change. Yeah, so carbon fibre door panels uh, on the front doors. We had to put a carbon fibre false floor in here um, purely because Neon wanted to run a floor mounted pedal box opposed to a um, bulkhead mounted one. The seat in position back by two and a half inches, the steering column is back by two and a half inches. The pedal box itself, all the master cylinders are under this tray, so everything, all the workings of this pedal box is under here. Um, and you can see how far back we are from the bulkhead. We're probably a foot away from the bulkhead to where the pedals are. Yeah, so the gear shift itself, I think the gear shift was from a company called Driftworks and uh, the gear shift itself is actually a nice bit of kit, but they are very, very difficult to set up and get nice in, in, in the correct right. position. So you've got your normal, your normal first, second, you know, up and down, they're very close and uh, the actual gear to get into the reverse, you, you pull that up and it releases the pin here, which allows you to push it hard over and up into reverse. Now you obviously can't obtain reverse without lifting, so you're not going to damage your gearbox, stick it in reverse on the track. <laughs> Front brakes, rear brakes and clutch uh, are mounted there. And the reason is you can just lean in and do a visual check without having to take the bonnet off. Um, I was building the car to make it easy for him to race. As you can see, you can see these, uh, the engine bed. So the engine bed with the, the DTM rose jointed internal ball joints. And then you've got your rose jointed um, lower arms, suspension, uh, custom caliper mounts, all the exhaust system obviously Andy, Andy's made. Yeah, carbon bumper on there, so yeah. carbon under tray. That bumper, um, so it's, it's actually cut from, from here, cut from here to about there. Um, again, this is something that the previous owner done, he filled this tray um, and took this, this nice chamfered part off. Um, this is where the original exhaust hole would have been on the M3. So you can see that it's got a side to that part and then it would have curved up nicely and then curved down here and then the chamfer part. The, the guy obviously wanted to fit this to the underside of the car, try to get a bit more downforce.
So I hope you think this car was as stunning as I do. I would like to give a big thank you to the owner for allowing me to film this car for you guys. If you've made it this far, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe. I'm already looking forward to the next episode, but until then, cheerio. Welcome to Car Lube. In this episode, we will demonstrate how a BMW M3 4 liter V8 sounds with a Pops and Bangs ECU map. The M3 in this video also has a custom two pipe OEM exhaust mod and decats. I'm sure after watching this video, you will agree it sounds spectacular.